today I'm going to show you everything I do with my window box from start to finish. You guys have seen my window boxes. Everyone's been asking, what do you do? I know I've put out lessons before, but uh, we figure why not put out a new one this year. So I'm just going to go ahead and quickly just show you what I do first. The first thing that I do is I empty out all of the old soil and I put in all new potting soil. I love the Jolly Gardener mixture. I get that at my parents' garden center, Wayne's Daughters Greenhouses. We all know that soil can get expensive, so if you have a tighter budget on your soil, then go ahead and just empty out 50% and then add in 50% new potting soil. I truly believe that a lot of the success of my window boxes is due to starting out with new potting soil every season. The other part of its success is the fact that it's a foot deep and a foot wide up here. The more space you have for roots to grow, the larger things get and the, and the more showy they get. You're probably wondering why I eliminate all of the potting soil. It's because we go from summer combinations to fall combinations and then leaving it in there all winter with pine boughs. So by the time the new season comes this spring, the soil is so depleted that if I go ahead and plant anything else in there, there's so many roots and it's so rough that it's not going to do much. So that's why I start over fresh and new and it's proven to show results. So that's why I just wanted to share that extra little tip with you guys. Another added factor to the success of the window boxes is adding time release fertilizer. I use Osmocote, I've used it for years and I love it. When you buy Osmocote, it gives you directions on it on how much to use. I've been using Osmocote for years, so for me, I already have it eyeballed down. So you see me putting a time release fertilizer in there. That does not mean you're done fertilizing for the year. The time release fertilizer is just in there as a backup plan during rainy weeks and days. So that way you're not just getting so much rain and they're not getting any extra nutrients as flowers. So this is just as your little backup plan in here. Anytime I don't add Osmocote, I can really tell a difference. So I still go ahead and fertilize through my water once a week with water soluble fertilizer. And by the mid season, I start doing it twice a week because in the beginning they don't need as much water, so that's why there's not as much fertilizer being used. But near the end of the season they need more water because they're rooted in here more, which means they also need more nutrients because the sun gets a lot hotter and there's not as much room for them to continue to grow in the amount of soil that's here for them. Once the osmocote's spread in there, I go through and I mix it in really, really well. I mix it throughout the, the top layer. That's where it matters the most. exactly where they're going otherwise if I start planting and then I have to move them around I have to dig them up out of that dirt again I know it's easy because it's potting soil but that way you're not you know creating all these holes and all this extra work and dirty mess if you set them up first then you can see it and then I go and I duplicate it into that box over there so say you only have one box and you set it up like this take a picture with your phone so that way you have something to look at and refer back to them once you take them out and plant them in there. So I'm going to start off with the South Pacific Orange Cannas. My dad seeds them so I know right where they come from. I've been using them for a few years. I love their performance. They get about two feet high and uh, this is the first year that he's done orange so I was super excited because immediately I saw them in my window boxes. So once I remove it from its pot this actually doesn't have really like cramped roots in there, but if they do, I sometimes just work them apart a little bit. 
I truly feel like this gives it like more of a head start because if you don't do this, I feel like sometimes they just keep wrapping around their own root ball. So we got it nice and broken up. I always try to keep the tallest part of the canna in the back. And now I'm just gonna dig the hole. Okay, and we're gonna put it right in there. There we go. And also remember when you're creating a combination to keep your tags. So that way you can bundle your tags together and put them right in the back of a container or the window box, wherever. So that way, if you really love your combination, you always have that combination on hand. The next variety I'm adding in here is my vertigo grass. This gets nice and tall as well, about three feet, sometimes even longer because you can winter it over. I always get them in these pots and with vertigo grass, you can cut them in half or in thirds. So out of one, you can really get three. So um, I'm gonna place them so they go right in between the cannas to kind of give it more of an even feel with height in the background. So these will get just a little bit taller and then the cannas will be right about here. So it'll be the perfect combination of different heights for the background with, for, your tall, for your tall varieties. Now I've got my big begonias. They get super colorful, they're gorgeous, and they can take full sun. So that's what's really cool about some of these new begonias. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of intermix these in there as well. My next varieties are all Taranthera. They can take full sun or full shade. So this is a larger variety. They get really beautiful in the dark colors. So I'm gonna put one in front of the canna so they go up and out. And by fall time, what's really cool is they'll start peeking out through wherever they get a chance to. Now I'm gonna add some seed geraniums. They can easily get taken over, so I'm only gonna add one on each end, there and here, just to add that extra pop of hot pink, because these are violet, so they are very vibrant. I always make sure to clean up the geraniums before they get planted in there, too. Here I've got the Proven Selections Sun Patience. These are awesome, they're impatience that are bright orange for full sun, and they have a beautiful variegation on the leaf. So I'm gonna also add three of these for that bright orange color. So I'm gonna start with a few trailing varieties. The first one is the Proven Winners Royal Chambray. So it's the Super Bina. I'm gonna put one on each edge here. What's really nice about these is they also have a little bit of a scent. I love it. And then we're gonna put one on this corner just to add a little touch of blue. So in the other window box, it's gonna be a little bit different. Instead of doing the Super Bina, I did some Fuchsia. And the reason for that is because that box actually is a little bit more shady. So anything that's always on like the inside of the corner over there, never tends to blossom much. So I figure why not put something that can tolerate more shade and give us some good flowers. So now we're gonna alternate a couple different trailers. First, we're gonna alternate with the pink scavola, which I'm gonna put right here. Right in there. See, we're starting to fill in the holes. The next one is Serfinia wild plum. So it's a nice trailing petunia. It has a beautiful color that's kind of bluish purple. It kind of looks like it glows, so that'll be very pretty in there. Whatever way that it's lain, its natural shape, that's the way that you wanna lay it off the front of the window box. The 
The next thing I'm going to add is the Gumfrina Forest Pink. It's a proven selection. I'm only going to add two because they get pretty large. But what's really nice is they sneak out in little places and add these pink little polka dots all over. I love the way it contrasts and adds texture and just a feels like a party when you add it into the window box. So we're going to add that right over here and right here. And as you can see, I keep the tallest growth near the back and the smaller, shorter growths facing the front. Now it's filler time. So anywhere there's a little gap, we add the fillers in and these are just cheap seeded annuals. So here we got some snapdragons in the bronze and the lavender just to add some extra little color to follow the palette here. And I'm just gonna put some here and I'm gonna put some here. I know this is really hard to hear, but I do take the flower off because then that allows all of the growth on the stem to bush out, which means a ton of flowers all season long. And we start that right away rather than waiting till this is done and then cutting it off. And then you're just putting yourself back even further. So just start with that and then you'll be a lot happier. The last filler I'm gonna fill in with is one of my favorites, Victoria Blue Salvia. So we're gonna place some right in here and we're gonna place some right in here. So that way it'll just kind of fill in and peek out and you'll see some blue that will tie in the blue chambray superbina. Since these are seeded varieties, they don't get as large as a specialty annual, so I bundle four of them together. All right, you guys, that's how I plant up my window box. So I can't wait to reveal the window box as soon as it's filled in and a lot larger. I always get a kick out of seeing how it turns out because I see it in my head, but it always tends to look just a little bit different once it is ready to be revealed. So I'm really excited. It's gonna be super colorful. It's different than last year. I know that there's a ton of stuff planted in here, but I like things full and bushy. I don't like things sparse or waiting months for it to fill in. We like instant gratification because here in Wisconsin, our seasons are short and we wanna be able to see flowers right away because our winters are too long. So here you go guys, this is what I did with my window box. So when you see it this year, midsummer, late summer, fall time, you're gonna be like, okay, now I know what you did. Thank you so much you guys for watching my lesson on how I create and plant up my window boxes. I'm always very proud of my window boxes, so I appreciate your time that you take to watch. Please feel free to share this video with anyone who would love it and feel free to subscribe to the Lawrence Network. All right, thank you so much, you guys. Have an awesome day. We'll see ya.